everyone. Welcome back to EFA 2013. Uh, we're here on the Panasonic stand. Uh, my name's Mike. This is Neil. And we're going to be your eyes and ears to take you around the Panasonic area, uh, show you all the great new technology. And in fact, when I say we're going to be your eyes and ears, I mean that literally. We, This camera here that's attached to the side of my head, you're going to be seeing through that. So you can direct us, tell us where to go, what you're interested in, and what you'd like to see. So Neil, why don't you tell them how they can do that? Okay, guys, so there's two ways you can keep in contact. If you want to keep in contact with Michael and ask him any questions about the wonderful product on show, just literally type in the question just below the screen. And you can also keep in contact with our expert backstage using hashtag Panasonic Ether Expert. So two great ways to get those questions answered. Okay, well, let's get out there on the show. So the first thing you'll see is that this is a huge exhibition hall that we've got here at IFA for Panasonic. Um, really busy now as well. We're right in the uh, middle of the Saturday. Uh, lots of thousands of visitors, tens of thousands coming here. And um, what I want to do to show you before we get stuck into the sort of meat of the day is some of our presentation areas. Um, we've got here, this is our TV presentation area. You can see a nice presentation about face recognition going on, and we'll perhaps come back to that a bit later on. This hour is mainly going to be around TV, but you know there'll be other topics as well that I'm sure you'll want to ask about. And over on here, we've got a speech just starting. So, um, Michael, we've already had a question. We've already had a question. The question is from Walter. Yeah. Hi, Walter. What is best for HD movie filming, camcorder or system camera? Well, for HD movies, Walter, what's really good is to use the largest sensor size that you get on a system camera. So in this area here, we've got lots of our system cameras, particularly our GH3, which is one of the top of the range system cameras. And as we join it, actually, I'm just going to take a step back because they're about to um, do an interview with quite a famous German filmmaker called uh, Nikolai Mullerstein. And Muller Schoen, I should have said. And he is uh, uh, filming a new movie called Frauen, which means women. You can see on the screens here clips with uh, from that film Frauen. And these were made on a GH3. So this is um, showing that actually professional grade movies are being made and shot on Panasonic consumer cameras. In fact, here we go. This movie up here was shot on one of these. So you can get this kind of quality at home. It's not just German films as well. There's a film in the UK cinema at the moment called Upstream Colour, uh, an American film which is getting a lot of acclaim. That was also shot on GH3. And um, Nikolai Mullerschön, just for those of you who don't know, is actually a very famous German filmmaker. He um, directed quite a big budget film called The Red Baron, which was uh, an international production with Joseph Fiennes in there alongside the German cast. So a very respected, serious filmmaker. We're not talking here about just little short videos. So if you are in um, EFA today, or you're thinking of coming down, then please come and see our, uh, our stand and come and hear this talk. So, Neil, have you got any questions? Yes, we've got questions coming in thick and fast. Next question is from Alan. He would like to see the 4K TV. The 4K TV, yes, this is the most popular topic of the, of the show so far. Um, 4K is the big new buzzword in consumer electronics. It's the thing that's got everyone excited. And Panasonic, we're very glad to show our brand new 4K TV. We're walking back over to the 4K area now. As we walk past, you can see how it fits into our whole lineup of TVs. A whole lineup of plasma and LED TVs. And then right at the top of the, the lineup, in this blue area here, the brand new WT600 4K TV. And we're doing something slightly different with 4K TV. This is the first 4K TV to be compatible with HDMI 2.0. And in the future, all 2K TVs will be like this because uh, that will be the standard for connecting up Blu-ray players, gaming consoles, all your Blu-ray content. 
So actually this area here, which we'll probably get into during the broadcast and you might want to ask questions about, is all about 4K, all the different applications, all the different things we can do. Okay, brilliant, thank you, Michael. Next question is from Julia, and she would like to find out what are Ultra HD TV offers in addition to a regular HD TV? Okay, well that's a good question because there's all this talk about Ultra HD and 4K and it's important to know exactly what we're talking about. Well, first, the first thing to say is that for Panasonic, 4K Ultra HD is the same thing. Um, there, there is some technical talk but it might be there's slight differences between the two. But by 4K TV, we mean a TV with a resolution of 3840, so 3840 by 2160, 2160. And the question was, how does that compare to a regular HD TV? Well, a regular HD TV is 1920 by 1080. So it's actually four times more. Um, and this is showing you exactly. Here we've got four regular HD TVs showing 1080 lines, and to get the same number of lines, we put them into one TV. And obviously that means we can get incredible detail on a large screen, because normally on a large screen, the lines, the pixels are magnified and you lose detail. And then even on close up to the Ultra HD um, 4K, you're not losing any detail. And that, in a nutshell, is what 4K is offering. OK, our next uh, question has come through. Actually, Michael, it's not much of a question, maybe more of a statement, and maybe you could help us with some of this. Um, it's not a matter. Um, Panasonic products are very good. Several years ago, he bought a TV. Yeah. And he's just saying that he's very pleased and enjoys this every single day. So I think this backs up kind of the quality product that Panasonic produce. Yeah, and that's a great statement, and we're fortunate enough to hear that quite a lot of the time. Um, as we come over to this big display of Panasonic TVs, uh, one thing that we get quite a lot, um, Neil and I, in our regular jobs, is people coming back to us saying that they've had Panasonic product for a long time. And th that's something that's been a core of Panasonic. We're here today to talk about new technology and brand new um, parts of the uh, the industry, but also the, the old-fashioned values of being high quality and reliable are things that are right at the core of the Panasonic brand. Yes, and something Panasonic will continue to do for years and years to come. Okay, Mike, now on to our next question. This is from Judith. What is the display port on the new 4K TV? Okay. I was going to say, my mum's called Judith, but there is no way that she would ever ask about display for. <laughs> so we can take it that Judith is a real person and not just my mum making something up. So DisplayPort is a really interesting thing. Um, some people listening to this or watching this may already have a DisplayPort connection on their PC or on their, um, their laptop. You probably see me walking past this car and think, what's going on there? So let's tell you what's going on with the car. What's going on with the car is, if I just get in the way, in there is a simulator and it's been set up running on this PC here. So this is um, a regular PC fitted with a very top-end graphics card, and the DisplayPort connection allows you to run 4K 60p gaming. So gaming at an incredibly high resolution. Excuse me for one moment, sir, we're just live on TV. Um, we've got the incredibly fast-moving action game here, 4K resolution, beautifully smooth. And this DisplayPort 1.2a connection is found on top-end PCs with great graphics engines, but also on top-end Macs. So as well as gamers, people in professionals like video editors, we talked a little bit about that movie over there. So perhaps movie editors would want to use this connection and see their, their movie in 4K as they edit it. So a really great connection, really interesting stuff that's happening with it. Okay, next question is from Max. Hi, Infotar. Can I surf 4K web content on the new TVs? 4K web content, yeah, we certainly can. Let's go and have a look at that. So now we're entering our real um, techie area, our real uh, in-depth area. And actually, some of our uh, senior staff here at, um, at Panasonic are 
uh, using that function right now. So whilst they're demonstrating, it's ideal. You can see we've got up some Google Maps. And from where I'm stood, which is a few feet away from a 65-inch screen, the level of resolution and detail is just overwhelming. Um, so one of the great things about 4K TVs is that it means that the internet uh, browsing um, experience is so much more detailed. And perhaps if these gentlemen don't mind for one second, I can get in really close. And you can see incredible level of detail in that map. Um, in, certainly in maps, but in all your online content as well. Okay, Mike, our next question has already come through. Yeah. And again, this is kind of going back to where we started in uh, this little section today. But we've been asked the question again is, what is the best for HD movie content? Should a customer stick with a more traditional camcorder, or is this something else we have to offer? For HD movie so making? We, HD that? movie making, yes. Yeah. Well, so obviously we do different stuff. We do our systems cameras, yes. etc. So he's kind of asking your opinion on what we believe at Panasonic can really stand up with this. So I think it may be another opportunity where we can go and show the GH3. Yeah, absolutely. Well, while we're here, though, just over my shoulder, I see this prototype of a 4K camcorder. And um, 4K movie cameras are being used currently to make... Um, some of the films that you see in the cinema. So now we're looking at bringing that professional technology into the home. Now, this is probably a year or two away. So Neil's quite right. What can we offer the movie maker today? Let's go and have a look. So we'll head back to our, um, our Lumix area, Lumix G, and um, see what we can see. Now, the reason we like to talk about interchangeable lens cameras for movie making uh, you might think, why aren't we talking about camcorders? Well, for, for real specialist movie making, for people who value quality, it's all about the size of the sensor. And the size of the sensor in our um, GH cameras or Lumix G cameras in general is significantly bigger than you'd find in any commercial camcorder. Commercial camcorders are great because they have big zooms, they have uh, lots of convenient features, but um, for real serious filmmaking to control things like aperture and shutter um, and iris and get specific effects, get that real filmic look. You can, you know the difference you, uh, you can see almost um, by, by feeling it, by feeling the quality of something that's been shot on a film compared to something that's been shot on a uh, camcorder. Actually, I don't know if I can get around to the front here, but our filmmaker I was talking about earlier on, Nicholas, uh, Nikolai Mulishin, is actually on stage right now. And, uh, so I'm going to sneak down here so it's not to get in people's way. And I'm actually filming him on a GH3 right now. Oh, battery, <laughs> battery's out. But this is the camera that he used to uh, make his most recent film. And you can perhaps see some of the results there. Yeah. You can obviously uh, as well use interchangeable lenses with a system camera, and that lets you get lots of great effects. Um, Things like um, wide angle, know, telephoto, lots of professional film. movie effects is, that uh, a gentleman is, like this can use to make a, a pro is, movie. Is what I would suggest the, um, for if you want a real in depth discussion of our uh, Linux G range, we've got um, our experts, Tony Stutt, later on, who'll be uh, taking a whole hour of questions on Linux G. Okay, brilliant, Michael. Right, now on to the next question. The next question is from Pong. What are the full range of voice interactive features on this year's TVs? The full range of voice interactive features. Great question. Let's go over to our, um, our Smart Viera section. You can see here we've got a, a whole load of stuff. By the way, by the time we get to the Lumix area, that's about half of the Panasonic hall. Behind that, there are whole areas dedicated to um, washing machines, uh, various domestic appliances, hair dryers, lots and lots of different things. Um, but here we are back in TV land. And so if I, excuse me, sir. Thank you very much. 
The question was about voice commands, so let me show you some of the voice commands at work. We've got here our uh, DT60, and this is the touchpad remote. Um, so the touchpad remote can be used on uh, the, the DT60 and WT60. It actually comes in the box with the, the higher of the, of the two models in the range. But you notice here in the corner you've got a little button that's a microphone. And I touch the microphone and then I, I can search things. So if you remember before we were watching on the 4K TV uh, searching for maps. So let me show you how easy it is to search a map. Search map London. So you see that, searching for maps of London, and there is a map of London. And so all I had to do was touch the button and say something. And if that's a bit uh, far out, I can go zoom in. And it'll zoom in or zoom out. And you can also use it for searching through the TV guide. You can use it for turning up the volume. Uh, you can use it for turning down the volume. You can use it for all kinds of things. Perhaps one of the cleverest things is over here. And um, this is, I think they're actually going to be making a film there. Um, this is where you uh, can create your own home screen and I'm going to move out of the way and let these people get on. But what you can do is where you create your own home screen, you can say to the TV, my home screen, and a camera will pop up on the TV. It'll pop up just about here. So is this and the camera that we can see just on the TV here, Mike? Absolutely, yeah. So they've obviously been using it on the, the big demonstration area. So you can see that just here. That pops up, recognises the face of the person that's in front of the TV, and then goes directly to their home screen. So by their home screen, we mean this kind of thing, all their favorite content. And this is one of the key features of Panasonic in uh, 2013, getting all their favorite content in one place, very simple. Okay, brilliant, Mike. Thank you very much there. Okay, next question is from Barry. And he would love to see how 4K works and what it can do. OK, let's take a look back into our 4K area. As we said, 4K, the big new technology um, that everyone's talking about. And obviously, Barry's very interested as well. So we've shown you a couple of things that he can do. We can show you it can do very high quality gaming. And we've shown you it can do very detailed maps. Um, but those are kind of specialist applications. So what about just watching TV every day? So why don't we show you a little bit of that? Over here, we've got two TVs, uh, the new Panasonic 4K TV and a conventional 4K TV. It sounds strange to be talking about conventional 4K TVs, but actually some companies have had them out in the market for a few months now. And the reason Panasonic perhaps have waited slightly longer is to add a couple of crucial fe uh, features. And one of them is that HDMI 2.0. Uh, we wanted to wait and add that. But the other thing is this, 60p input. And 60p input means how many frames a second can you input progressively, so full frames into the TV. And, and to give you uh, an example, your normal TV at home will be running at 50 frames a second. So when you watch the football at home, it's pretty smooth. Um, but with most 4K TVs that are available right now, except for the Panasonic, they run at 30p, or if you're in the UK, 25p, which means that fast-moving action like sports, particularly when you see camera panning movements, and I'll, I'll wait to see if we can see some of that, you'll see quite a bit of juddering in the image uh, when the camera swings around and also when the ball's running around as well. So you can see it a little bit there, actually, on the, this shot. And that's why, if you frankly take a look at a lot of demonstrations of 4K TV, you'll see a lot of very still images, not lots of cameras swinging about, not lots of fast-moving action. Whereas on the Panasonic, with the 60p input, we've got smooth motion as well as detail. And that's going to help you whatever you're watching. So again, all about picture quality. Right, Absolutely. moves us nicely on, Mike, to our next question. Mm -hmm. So the next question is from Jan. 
How many different 4K TVs are there? Panasonic have just brought out the, the very first one, so it's actually the 4K WT600, and it's the 4K version of our top of the range LED TV, which is the WT60 or WT65, depending which country you live in. So at the moment we've just got the one, but it's the it'll be available to buy soon. It's not a prototype, and it's also the sort of what's coming um, uh, soon. So it's our first step into the marketplace, but I think. We can be pretty sure there'll be more coming from Panasonic over the next few years. You've mentioned prototypes. Are there any prototype TVs at the show today? Absolutely. Let's go and have a look. So 4K is one new technology that people are talking about. And you can see how the gaming is really gathering a crowd, this 4K gaming as we walk past it. But the other great new technology that I think is on the TV side people are talking about a heck of a lot is OLED or organic LED and in this booth here this beautiful sort of darkened off area we're showing Panasonic's brand new prototype um, 4k OLED screen so back at the beginning of the year we showed the first ever 4k OLED screen back at the CES show in Las Vegas back in January um, and that was very much a collaboration with, uh, with, with Sony. This one, we're continuing some of the information sharing with Sony, but this one's produced entirely by Panasonic. And this is a new 55-inch 4K. Now, people are then going to ask, well, if you're, you've got a prototype, why aren't you bringing it to market? And some of the companies are bringing um, standard HD uh, OLEDs to market. Well, what we, we want to do is two things. We want to embrace both 4K and OLED at the same time to get both new technologies together, but also to make OLED affordable um, because currently it's you know quite out of people's price ranges. And so Panasonic are developing a new method of production of organic LED with RGB printing, which um, I could talk about for a little while, but it might be getting a little bit dull. But the, the upshot of it is that it makes organic LED more efficient and then we can bring it to a, a mass market rather than just having it for a few specialists. So that's one prototype that we've got here today. That's brilliant, thank you Mike. Right, next question's already in. And this is gonna be one for our Vieira guys that are gonna be make them very pleased. And the statement reads, really looks good, I wanna purchase everything I've seen so far. <laughs> can you show me the new HDTV? You certainly can, we certainly can. Let's go back over there. And um, there's, I, although I, you know, I've talked a couple of times, we've, there's still lots of things that we can tell you about the, the new 4K TV. And the last point that the guy makes about about wanting to purchase is absolutely right. You, this this model, this WT600, will be on sale next month across Europe. So take a look out for your local area to see uh, exactly when and where. But one thing we haven't talked about on 4K yet is actually a really important thing, and that is how does a 4K TV work when you put regular TV pictures into it, whether it's HD broadcast or your existing DVDs and Blu-rays? And the answer is it works really well because we've got 4K upscaling built into the TV. And the TV will do its best with whatever information you put into it to turn it into 4K. And if you pair it up with a Panasonic top-end Blu-ray player, this happens to be a German model Blu-ray recorder down here, these also have 4K upscaling built into them. Um, particularly other, um, some of our Blu-ray players this year have that. Um, and when you do Blu-ray upscaling here and send an upscaled uh, picture to here, you get a really good result. So when people ask me, What's it going to look like with regular TV? I say, well, it's going to look at least as good as your regular HD, and depending on how good the original signal is, hopefully a bit better. OK, Michael, we've talked a lot about 4K, mm. but we also have the, this year's range, of com our complete range of Absolutely. HD TVs on it. So should we show maybe some of the stuff that is in 4K? Let's have a look, because as we've been saying, not everything's in 4K yet, not, not, a, not a long way. In fact, 4K broadcasts haven't started. So I think for most people, they'll be watching HD TVs. And we can offer them basically 
whatever TV they want to suit their needs. So here's the 4K TV sitting at the top of the range. And as we move along, we've got our topper end HD TV. This is the WT60 uh, with the pop-up camera that we saw before. Uh, this is the DT. If you remember when I was doing the uh, talking to the TV, that was the DT. Look at the style of this. Absolutely gorgeous. Almost no bezel at all. This is V-shaped design. Absolutely gorgeous TV. Then our mainstream TVs, and to me this is amazing, but this is what we could call a mainstream TV. To me it looks like futuristic, but you know, I'm an old man. Um, this is an ET. So ET means you're getting smart and you're getting 3D. Um, so you're getting everything, all the new technology in a really nice family TV. And then if you don't want 3D, we have the E which is our super slim, smart LED. One thing we've been getting a lot of questions about today is plasma. And you can see here a whole range of plasma TVs, including the very famous VT series. I myself have got a VT. Unfortunately, it's not the VT60. Uh, it's, um, it's an older v V10, can you believe? So I probably need to get in myself a new plasma. But with plasma, you're getting, you can see it on the screen right now, rich colors, deep blacks, um, smooth motion. And that's why Panasonic remain committed to plasma and why it's such a popular item. In fact, if I can just uh, see here, this is the ZT. We introduced a, a new top, top end of plasma that we didn't even have before to show our commitment for it with its studio master panel. This means that it's got a very unreflective screen um, that, that produces such crisp, clean blacks. So for movies like this one, big special effects film, just perfect. So that's a little taster of the range. We got any other questions? Okay. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to Andy for that question. And guys, please keep your questions coming in. Like we said, just below where we are now, you can enter your questions. You can also speak to our expert backstage at hashtag Panasonic Ether Expert. So please keep those questions coming in. Right. On to our next question. This is from AJ. Very fitting that we hear, Mike. He would like to see the best plasma TV at IFA? Well, I'll just turn back around again. This is the best plasma TV in the world. And of course I'm going to say that. I work for Panasonic, so does Neil. We're going to say that. But do yourself a favor, type ZT60, uh, TXP ZT60 is the full assignation. Type that into a search engine and see for yourself the reviews. Um, it gets some of the most spectacular reviews I've ever seen. Um, I think a lot of people in the TV industry hark back to the day when Pioneer used to make their Kuro sets and they produced an exceptional level of black. Um, this is, I think, beyond even that level. And then, of course, we've brought all everything else that's come in the meantime since the days of, of Kuro, things like Smart TV, things like 3D, things like Twin Tuner. Um, so we've, we've got a state-of-the-art TV here, and one that you'd be very pleased to have in, uh, in your house. And if it wasn't 60 inches, I'd have it in my house, but I'm just too poor. I haven't got that big a house there. OK, Mike, straight on to the next question. It's from Damon. I have bought a Vieira TV this year, and I want to know what I can plug in to the USB port to allow me to record TV when the TV is switched off. Okay, that's a great question. And let's have a go around and look at one of our TVs here on, um, on the smart area. Because these are nicely positioned on the wall so we can see the, the inputs on the side. So this is a DT60. And you can probably see there a whole range of inputs, including one, two, three uh, USB inputs. And what those USB inputs allow you to do is put in a hard drive. Um, we recommend a hard drive that's fitted for audio visual work. In fact, over here we've got some, we've got uh, another example which might, might come in useful while I'm talking about this. So yes, attach a hard drive that's fitted for audio visual work and you can essentially turn your TV into a recorder. And the gentlemen here um, have been demonstrating that. In fact, they've got their Western Digital hard drive plugged in 
to the looks like a DT here. Yeah. And you notice it's going into that USB, the third one down, that was coloured blue. And the reason for that is because that's the USB 3 connection, um, which is much faster and allows you to do things like record one channel and watch another at the same time. So we've got here a recording of the Germany match from last night. And we could be on the other channel. In fact, we are. Excuse me, gentlemen. So whilst we're watching this recording from the hard drive, the TV is streaming out another channel over DLNA to this small portable TV here. So incredibly high tech use of the twin tuner, but in a very, very simple to set up solution. So brilliant, Michael. Right, next question's in already. This is from Andrew Michael. Can you help me catch up with the HD revolution? I'm lagging behind. Of course we can, yes. We, the HD revolution is well in place. I think actually every single TV we make now is HD. And, you know, we've talked a lot today about the top end of the market. But let me just show you, if you're just catching up with HD, what you'll get for a sort of uh, mid-range TV. So this is an ST plasma. Um, what you're getting here isn't just HD. You're getting um, uh, 3D as well. You're getting smart. So the sort of last three big technologies that we talked about on on TV are the HD, the smart, and the 3D, all built in here. And now, depending where you are in Europe or in the world, um, most of our uh, TVs on sale will have a high definition or several high definition tuners built into them. So let me speak on uh, about the UK ones because those are the ones I know most closely. Uh, on a UK TV you'll have two Freeview HD tuners built in and two Freesat HD tuners built in. I believe this German TV we're looking at right now has has three tuners built in there. They have a, a cable, satellite, and a, uh, an aerial HD. So even at the sort of mid-range point, you're right on board with all the latest in 3D. OK, brilliant, Mike. Next question, and this is one for maybe me to answer, Michael. Uh, this is from Hannah. How much will the 4K tablet cost? As you know, Michael, we really haven't been given much prices on some let's of the products here. The, uh, but let's go and have a look at the 4K tablet. And let's also remember that if you need to get any prices or details on any of this product, please log on to the Panasonic website and you'll be able to find a dealer from there. So, Michael, what is the 4K tablet all about? The 4K tablet is a brand new concept. We, we showed a prototype at CES uh, back in January, but this is actually a production model. So um, although we can't confirm prices just yet, what we can say is that you'll be able to buy this um, probably from November in Europe. And the 4K tablet is, as it, the name probably suggests, a tablet in the same resolution as that huge TV that we've been talking about already today. Mm -hmm. So, here we go. Here is the tablet. I'll just hold it up so you can see how thin it is. It is the uh, thinnest and lightest tablet of this size. It's 20 inches. Um, perhaps we can get the engineer here to put it back into a mode I can understand. Beautiful, yeah. So here we're showing one of the possible applications, which is for an architect, you can have very detailed plans, use this, uh, this precise touch pen that we've got to annotate them, to mark them up, and zoom into an incredible level of detail, which just isn't possible on your normal 10-inch, um, 11-inch tablet. So thank you very much. That's an idea of how an architect might use it. Uh, along here we've got some... Uh, other ideas so this might be in um, a museum where you've got an exhibit so here we've got this this very detailed picture of a beetle and I can look underneath it just by touching it and spinning it round and get these incredible um, high definition photos because remember 4k in terms of pixel resolution for a photograph is 8 million pixels so you're seeing a level of detail you just couldn't see before. For instance, here we've got an idea of showing it close up in museums. So I touch the, the painting and it goes in, I can see the textures of the, the image, 
it's almost like I'm there in the museum actually seeing the brush strokes. This looks like a, maybe a Van Gogh or something. So it will be for professionals, professional photographers, but it is coming to buy soon. So again, just log on to the Panasonic website to find your nearest dealer and all the information about it. Okay, Michael, next question is in, and it is from Barry. Can you show me the biggest HDTV on display today? The biggest TV that we've got on display today is actually the 65 inch, but Panasonic do make the world's largest 4K TV. And people are kind of surprised that we, we, when I say this, because we made it back in uh, 2010, and it's a 152 inch plasma TV. Now, the way it works in Panasonic is that all the TVs you can see in here that I'm, as I turn around, all these are consumer TVs. And um, the show here, Ether, is a show for consumers. All these people wandering about, these are all members of the public, except for the ones with badges on. And um, so this is for you know, consumers who want to buy their own home cinema. But in our professional business, Panasonic have a business called uh, Panasonic Display or Panasonic Systems, and we make 84-inch plasmas, we make 103-inch plasmas, and we make that whopping 152-inch plasma. In fact, Panasonic make the largest TV in the world, and I know you, sometimes you see, oh, Company X has made the biggest TV in the world, or Company Y, but when we say that, we mean this is a TV you can actually put your money down and buy it today. It's not a prototype, it's not just one in a laboratory, it's um, available to buy right now. But you probably uh, wouldn't be rushing out because it's more the kind of thing that you'd, uh, you'd put in a museum or put in a, uh, an airport rather than in your front room. Or our head office back in the UK. Exactly right. <laughs> okay, next question, Michael. Um, are there any wireless speakers available? Wireless speakers, absolutely there are. Let's slip across. We've been, excuse me guys. We've been very much on the Viera side of things, the TV side of things. But um, in the last couple of minutes here, we're gonna take a quick look at what we call our Home AV area. And Home AV stands for Home Audio Visual. So things like speakers, things like Blu-ray players. And over here, we've got some brand new portable speakers. And as you can see, they're very popular with some of the people here. So starting, let's go around the corner here. See if we can get in there. Hello again. So here we've got a range of new portable speakers. They collect, connect wirelessly um, via Bluetooth, and you can also connect with NFC, near field communication, which means in order to connect it up, is I've got my speaker. Neil, you've got a tablet. How would NFC connect them, the two together? Well, simple as that. So as long as your tablet is equipped with NFC, you just touch the two together, and then Neil could stream music from his tablet down to the speaker, and you can see they come in these fetching um, uh, carry cases. This is the NA10, brand new, just come out. Over here, the one that the gentleman is using just there, this is the NA30. And NA30, you can see, is a larger, more retro-styled one, but also, um, sounds great. No, no, please, carry on using it. That's what we're here for. Um, and the reason it sounds so great is because it's got a huge, big speaker in there. So that's just a, a taste of our speaker um, display and a taste of home AV. And um, as we walk over to the front again, I think we're, um, we're almost coming to the end of our time here at, uh, at, uh, on this hour. We'll be back with another show at the top of the next hour. So all it remains for me to say uh, is thank you very much for listening. Keep your questions coming in for the next show. And from me and Neil, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.